Thanks, Ruth. Um, so I'm just going to take for a second the, the moderator's prerogative that I'm standing here to comment on Archie's comment about the NCI and CDC collaborating. And I just want to say that here we are, Eric and myself, have in much discussion about the work that we're doing. And actually, our projects, you're quite welcome. No, but, but, but it is a good point, and that is that to some extent, each of us, our own institutes, have their own priorities and their own um, you know, areas of, of emphasis. But the good news is, is that we recognize that there's important work happening in, in different institutions, and we are actually um, working to make sure that we're in line about those, those things. So I'd like to welcome Dr. Eric Tai, who's going to be talking about some work from the DRFSF. So today, <clears throat> today I'll be discussing health status of adolescent and young adult cancer survivors. So AYA cancer survivors are at risk for late effects, and lifelong follow-up care is recommended. However, compared to pediatric populations that are younger or some adult populations such as breast cancer or colorectal cancer survivors, AYA cancer survivors have not been as well characterized in the literature. So our aim was to describe demographic characteristics, risk behaviors, chronic conditions, quality of life, and healthcare access among AYA cancer survivors. For this analysis, we used the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, or BRFSS. This was created um, in, by CDC in 1984. And it's the largest continuously conducted telephone health survey in the world. There are over 400,000 interviews conducted every year. And it's held in all 50 states, uh, DC, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and Guam. BRFSS collects information from adults aged 18 years or older. And it uses a random digit dialing for landlines and cell phones, which were added in 2009. And it monitors risk behaviors related to chronic diseases, injuries, and death, as well as looking at the use of preventive services. And it's been used by states um, and researchers and government to, um, to look at preventive, preventing disease and promoting health. BRFSS questions come from three different sources. Um, the first are a core set of questions. And these are asked by all states every year. There's also a rotating core of questions, and these are asked by all states, but in every other year. And then there are optional modules. These are optional questions which any state can choose to ask any given year. And there's many different topics that people can submit as optional questions. So this is the core list of topics for BRFSS. Included in this is cancer diagnosis. And cancer diagnosis was added for the first time in 2009 and has been part of the core since then. This is a list of the rotating core topics for BRFSS. So you can see in the even years, cancer screening is asked um, in the survey. And it covers breast, cervical, colorectal, and prostate cancer. And this is the list of the optional modules for BRFSS. Included is a module on cancer survivorship, which asks questions on the type of doctor, type of treatment, treatment summaries, follow-up care, chronic pain, and clinical trial enrollment. And most recently, about 10 or so states have used um, the cancer survivorship model, op optional module. So for our study, we looked at the 2009 BRFSS data, and we used the core module. We defined AYA cancer survivors as survivors whose age of first cancer diagnosis was between 15 and 29 years. Response were asked to two questions. Have you ever been told by a doctor, nurse, or health professional that you had cancer? And at what age were you told that you had cancer? As a comparison group, we identified respondents without a history of cancer. We calculated weighted, weighted prevalence estimates with 95% confidence intervals, and we used non-overlapping 95% confidence intervals as a measure of significance. So this was our sample. 
We identified just over 4,000 AYA cancer survivors and approximately 345,000 persons without cancer. Median age for AYA cancer survivors was 40 years, which was slightly lower than persons without cancer at 43 years. Among AYA cancer survivors, most commonly respondents were 20 years or more out from their cancer diagnosis. In terms of race and ethnicity, a greater proportion of AYA cancer survivors were white, non-Hispanic, and a lower proportion were non-Hispanic, black, and Hispanic. We also examined risk behaviors among AYA cancer survivors and persons without cancer. Uh, we examined current smoking, which was about 26% among AYA cancer survivors, which was significantly higher than that among persons without cancer at 18%. And note, note, this is among people who've had a cancer diagnosis. Obesity was also uh, slightly but significantly increased uh, among AYA cancer survivors compared to persons without cancer. And also, a higher proportion of AYA cancer survivors reported no leisure time physical activity in the past month. We also examined chronic conditions. We looked at cardiovascular disease, which um, together was a history of myocardial infarction, angina, and coronary disease. And the prevalence of 14 to 14% was approximately double the prevalence seen among persons without cancer. Hypertension as well, um, there was a higher prevalence of hypertension among AYA cancer survivors compared to persons without cancer. And this was also true for diabetes as well. Approximately 15% of AYA cancer survivors reported having current asthma, which was nearly double that seen among persons without cancer. And disability was also uh, approximately double the prevalence seen among AYA cancer survivors compared to persons without cancer. We also looked at self-reported quality of life. Um, the first measure we looked at was 14 or more days of poor mental health in the past month. And that was also approximately double among AYA cancer survivors compared to persons without cancer. We also looked at uh, the number of days of poor physical health in the past month. And approximately 24% of AYA cancer survivors reported having 14 or more days of poor physical health month. And this was more than double that seen among persons without cancer. We also looked at healthcare access. And we didn't find any significant difference between AYA cancer survivors and persons without cancer in terms of health insurance access. And this is 2009 data. However, we did find that there was a significantly higher proportion of AYA cancer survivors who reported that they could not see a doctor because of cost compared to persons without cancer. We also looked at employment. There was a significantly lower proportion of AYA cancer survivors who reported being employed for wages and a significantly higher proportion of AYA cancer survivors who reported being out of work or unable to work. So in conclusion, we found that AYA cancer survivors commonly reported adverse behavioral, medical, and healthcare access characteristics, which may lead to poor long-term medical and psychosocial outcomes. So what can be done to address um, these adverse behaviors and conditions? One is I think, implementing evidence-based interventions for specific risk behaviors, such as smoking or physical activity. And there have been studies that are showing there are evidence-based um, interventions that can help these, um, these behaviors in specific populations. Also increasing adherence to established follow-up guidelines, such as the COG long-term follow-up guidelines. And also programs that were mentioned earlier, such as ASCO's Focus Under 40 program that improves education for providers um, that focus on this population as well. So some strengths and limitations. Um, strengths of this study is that it's a population-based data. And we did have a large sample size. This was just from one year of data. Some limitations are that BRFS data is self-reported. And it's also not administered to individuals less than 18 years of age. So people who are diagnosed at age 15 were at a minimum of three years out from their cancer diagnosis. Next slide. 
just want to acknowledge my co-authors um, on this uh, study, and um, I guess we'll wait for questions.